Joining us now is New York City Department of Education Chancellor Richard Carranza. Thank you for joining us. How do you get an economy back reopened with kids only going to school one to three days a week? Hi, Sarah. So, look, we understand that uh, public schools are critically important for the economy to jumpstart. We can make up uh, academic slide. We cannot make up when we lose a student due to this COVID virus. So health and safety have to be first and foremost. In addition, we have adults in classrooms with children and in schools with children, some of whom may have pre-existing conditions or be taking care of someone with a pre-existing condition. So we have to make sure that everything we do with in-person learning is really based on science, not science fiction. So we're working very closely with medical experts, our epidemiologists, uh, to make sure that what we are planning for is going to be medically safe for students, adults, and our communities. Isn't science now pointing you toward a full reopening? The American Academy of Pediatrics is recommending kids go to school, and there have been studies in places that have reopened schools in parts of Europe showing that kids are not big transmitters of COVID-19. Yeah, so we're, we're up to date with all of that research, but I will tell you this, right now in the state of Texas, they're having an explosion of COVID-19 infections in daycare centers where there are hundreds of children, young children, who remember the, the, the word was young children don't get as sick, but adults have actually gotten sicker because they've been working in those daycare centers. So this, this virus keeps on mutating and we keep learning every day, every week, something new about how this transmits, how it presents itself in our population. And for us as educators who love children, we are not gonna put children or the adults that serve those children uh, in a condition where they may get uh, infected or be able to spread that virus to those that they love and care for. How, how good or, or perhaps bad is, a, is remote learning as a substitute? Well, Will, look, we, we are swimming in a portfolio of bad choices. There are no perfect choices here. Uh, the, the perfect choice would be we have a vaccine and we're back to business. But we know that's not the case. So what we're trying to do is pick the least onerous of a portfolio of onerous choices. So given the guidelines that we've already had around social distancing, the guidelines around disinfecting, the guidelines around movement within a school, the guidelines around how do you enter a school, how do you exit a school, how do you limit uh, from a social distancing perspective, how do we serve the maximum amount of students as possible? In New York City, one of the densest cities in the United States and the world, and our schools are no different, we need to make sure that we're able to serve our students in, in following all the medical advice in a way that is going to ensure their medical safety. Because of that, we know that we can't possibly serve, just because of the physical dimensions of our schools, 100% of our students in an in-person learning environment five days a week. So we've been able to develop with a lot of input from our teachers, our principals, our families, uh, several models in which, yes, students will be in school for a couple of days. They'll be remote learning a couple of days. There'll be one day where they'll be uh, uh, trans, uh, transitioning week by week. But we've tried to keep in mind that we want to give as much uh, normalcy, as much knowledge about what days will my children actually be in-person learning as possible. At the same time, it's important to note that we surveyed our parents and our students and we got over 450,000 responses to this survey. And there is a, a good percentage of our parents that have said, I will not send my child back to in-person learning until there is a vaccine. So we're also planning for how do we, in a blended learning, virtual learning environment, serve the educational needs of those students as well as we plan for an opening in September. Now, this is all predicated upon the fact that medical yeah. circumstances may change those plans at any minute. Right. And we're hoping for a vaccine sooner than later. And, and I get your point about how, you know, you're trying to choose the best of both options. I, I, I don't understand, though, you know, as a parent and as someone who wants to return to work, 
why you have decided it's better to go this route versus the, the potential detrimental effects on children socially and from a learning perspective if they keep not going to school? I mean, wh who's advising you exactly on the medicine and the science that tells you that this is the better option? Well, we have a number of medical experts uh, that we're consulting with, not only at the city, but at the state and at the national level. We are the largest school system in America. We have access to a lot of really uh, well-qualified uh, medical experts. But here, here's the bottom line. I'm sorry to be so blunt about this. I'm going to reiterate what I said at the beginning. We can make up the educational slide. We can make up the trauma that our students have uh, suffered and, and attend to that. We cannot bring back a student that's been lost due to an infection for COVID-19. This is about life and death. This is about health and safety. So we are very, very much looking at if we're going to put human beings in spaces together, and we know more than we did in March that this virus spreads through close quarters. It spreads through uh, expectorants. We know that if you put people in close proximity, there's a greater propensity for them to become infected. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that that environment is a safe learning environment. We can make up the, the academic slide. We can't bring back a child that we've lost or an adult that we've lost because we haven't been uh, attendant to those medical needs. Richard Carranza, That's thanks so much driving. for joining us.